Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 69. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 8 or the PowerPoints for chapter 8, click on the link directly below this video and scroll way down to the Excel Finance class section. Oh, we're in chapter 8 talking about investment criteria net present value. We just talked about that in the last video. We saw how to estimate market value for an asset using discounted cash flow valuation and we saw how to use the net present value function. Now net present value totally important that we learn how to build a net present value profile. So um, first we're going to calculate our uh, net present value of these estimated cash flows for a particular asset and then the profile means you just figure out what net present value is at various rates in a table and then you chart it to see it visually and we'll see how to chart it a few different ways all right uh, so we've estimated so should we launch a new product that will be around five years that has these cash flows here's the cash flows out all cash out all cash in so I'm going to do my formula right here, equals all the cash in plus, uh, and I have these as negatives here, so we can add cash flow times zero is a, a minus 100,000. That's the uh, current price. So the question is, do we uh, buy it at 100,000? Is that um, price just right, too much, or too little? So here's our cash flow. So uh, for year end of year one, we're going to have these cash flows, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're going to come down here, and then we saw in our last video, we get to use the net present value function. We have to do our required rate of return. That's determined internally inside the business, which includes whatever risk this project has. And we've determined that it is 0.2. So we simply use our net present value. The rate, that is the period rate, but our period is annual. So we're just going to use that annual rate. And then simply, bloop, do not highlight time zero. Remember, as we said before, net present value function, it's as if the people who created it years ago uh, didn't completely understand it. So if you're calculating net present value, right, all the cash will start at time one or later. The net present value understands that this is one, two, three, four, five. So the sequence of the cash flows um, not only helps the net present value function calculate all the individual discounting, but it also knows how many periods there are. We simply calculate that. If I enter that, we can see that's how much we are willing to pay, right? 99,000. So if we determine that we're willing to pay 99,000 and they're charging 100,000, forget it. We're not going to do it. But we have to complete our calculations. That's not the net present value calculation. You then have to subtract the cost. But since we have it listed as negative, I'm going to add. Ooh, that's too many decimals. I don't want to see all those. All right, so. That's negative. And as we mentioned in the last video, the rule is if net present value is positive, we can accept the project. It adds value to the firm. If it's negative, we're not going to accept it. We're going to reject it. It will decrease, uh, take away value from the firm. So the answer is no. Right? Now we've determined this discount rate. What if it actually was not really 20% or 0.2, but it was 0.18? Oh, then we get a positive. So I'm going to do 0.2. Right? So that is where the net present value profile comes in. And it's important. It'll help us visually see uh, what happens to net present value as the rates change. Um, and the crossover point will tell us something interesting also. So I'm going to come here um, and do my net present value function. The rate, ah, I'm going to do that, and it goes all the way down to 36, comma. And the values, I'm simply going to highlight my cash flow values right there. Hit the F4 key to lock it, close parentheses, plus that cost, which is negative, F4 to lock it, control enter, and then double click and send it down. Oh, look at this. As the discount rate increases, the price goes down. We've talked about this inverse relationship between discounting and the current price of a uh, whatever it is, um, whether it's a bond or a project or another business or machine or whatever it is, whatever asset you're valuing. Rate goes up, 
price goes down inversely related. Oh, and there it is. At exactly 20%, we have that. Now, we want to chart this, right? Because this is going to give us some good visual information. Now, to chart, I'm going to highlight the, the label, both of these labels here. And then all the way down, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift Down Arrow. So I've highlighted uh, our rate here and our price here. This will be on the horizontal axis. This will be on the vertical axis. And we're going to do an area chart. Insert area. And then this one right here. And lo and behold, look at that. It shows us there's the crossover point. That'll become important. But visually you can see boom right there all this is added value all this is is uh, subtracting value from the firm so at all of these rates here uh, the discount rates or required rates of return we're adding value to the firm that means we have a positive net present value and here uh, we have negative so anything right that little crossover and we'll determine that later all of these rates if our required return is up in here we're gonna not take the project. Now we need to clean this up. I can see all sorts of problems here. Look at that. It didn't even get the right um, uh, numbers at all. So uh, first let's click here. Actually we don't need to click anywhere. We need to select the chart. There's the design. These are chart tools, context sensitive, ribbons, design, and there it is, select data. This is the key to charting oftentimes because the chart just didn't get it at all. But here we can redirect it. So we click there. Now on this side are the uh, numbers and on uh, the series, right? And over here is the horizontal labels or categories. So I'm going to click edit and it just didn't put, it didn't get anything. It, it, uh, uh, put in the default one, two, three, we can see here. So we simply make sure that the cursor is there and then highlight the percentages. And then click OK. All right, so we can already see that's starting to look uh, better there. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to um, delete this for the time being. We will come back and uh, talk about the why I have those labels set up the way they are there. All right, so there we have our rates. Uh, and this is a mess here. Uh, let's go back up here. I shouldn't have closed that. And here we can edit. Now I'm going to click here. It looks like that one right there. We don't need that one, so I'm going to remove. And then uh, by default, it took this one there. So it, you see the chart wizard totally mixed everything up. That will be fine. I'm going to click OK. Now here, I need to format this. So I'm going to click on it and right click Format Axis or Control 1. Control 1. And I want to do Number. And I'm going to say zero decimal places. Uh, and uh, maybe have a currency. So like that. OK, so we see some dollar signs there. All right. Um, We'll come. I, I, we don't want this. I'm going to delete this. Now we want to talk a little bit about this, right? Here's the positive net present values. Here are the negatives, and I would like to see a different color. I want this to be one color, and this to be another, another different color. I want to maybe use red for bleeding, losing money, and then green for making money. So I'm going to click here and go up to home. And how about just use this button right here? I'm going to go to more colors and select a green or something. Now that's all, that's not what we want, but it's all green, but that's the starting point. And oftentimes with charts in Excel, you have to trick them. So I'm going to scoot this up here, and the way you trick them is you add a second series to the chart. So that's why this, this column is going to be a positive net present value, and this one's going to be negative. So in essence, we're going to plot a second column and add it, but it's just going to have the negative values. That'll allow you to allow, then you'll have two data series here and you can change the color. So I'm going to do a formula like this. Really, we could just come down here to the crossover point and um, go equals net present value. Actually, we could cheat and put this in edit mode and copy. Copy in edit mode, escape. Put it back into edit mode and control V. Right? So that's the idea how to do this. Now we have some values here and nothing here. Now I'm going to come back and change this because right now if we change uh, an input up here, this wouldn't work. So 
we'll come back and fix that. But right now, that gives us the idea we want to highlight, including the label. Actually, no, let's do it this way. Boop. Uh, chart tools, design, and then come back up here. Oh, so not only can you edit, delete, right, but you can add. So I'm going to click add, and the series, it says series name, boop, that one there. Now, the series values, it always comes by default with that one. Now, you got to highlight it and hit delete. Be sure and delete that, and then highlight just the values, including all those blank cells, which will be interpreted as zero. And already we can see that is so cool. Click OK. I'm going to click Edit. This is a new one, and it's, it's looking at the wrong thing. It didn't interpret it right, so I'm going to highlight these. I don't think that would uh, matter here, but uh, just to keep both of them, so anytime we click on them, we can see we have the, the correct labels. Click OK. So that's looking good. Now we can click on this one. And sometimes it's tricky to select, but you can come up to the layout. And then over here, boom, you can pick any element you want in the chart. I'm going to say Series minus Net Present Value Reject there. You can also use your arrow keys. I'm using my arrow keys. If you've ever noticed, the arrow keys inside of chart move through the different elements. That one, see, they're all highlighted. This, this one, it's just that. And those are mean that all the other ones are zero. So now we can change the color. Home, here, red. Oh, looking great already. So visually, we can see whatever that dividing point, whatever that rate is there, that's called the crossover rate. It's actually called the in internal rate of return means for this cash flows that's the rate at which net present value is zero but nevertheless for us just think of it as a hurdle right so that little rate whatever it is any if our required rate of return is less than that we are definitely getting positive net present value if it's greater than that hurdle right there then we're going to have um, minus net present value. Now we need to do some more things. We have to add labels so that when we're looking at this we know. So I'm going to go up to Layout, Axis Titles. I'll do the vertical first right here. And I'm just going to type this one. Notice uh, before we link the cells, but we don't really need to do this. Uh, this one is highlighted. You start typing. I'm going to type NPV. Notice when you're typing it's, it's all of a sudden default up here. but hit enter and it uh, enters it. Let's add another one. This time I'm going to go uh, horizontal, title below. I'm going to type RRR space open parenthesis discount. You can see it uh, up here and then hit enter. All right, so that's starting to look good. Now, we definitely want to add the legend back in. So I'm going to go to layout. There it is, legend. And I don't care. Um, actually, I do care where it is. I want it to serve as the chart title. So I'm going to say legend at top. Ah, oh, that is looking great. Now, let's do something else here. How about uh, insert? Actually, no, we're going to leave it just like that. That is our net present value profile. I'm going to try and change the size a little bit, point to the edge, and uh, click and drag in like that. See if I can come over here. Now, I want this dynamic. Right now, if we changed um, some cash flows or something, if I made this uh, uh, minus 80,000, uh, that chart's not working so well, right? Um, so we need to fix this. Oh, I'm going to control Z. We want it to be more dynamic. So I'm going to come over here and we want to think how we're going to change this. Because I want um, whatever the the rate at whatever rate hurdle there is um, causes this to be negative. I want all of these formulas to update, right? And so we have to think about this. Well, what do we know? If net present value is negative, then I want to run this calculation. Otherwise, I don't in this column. So here's how you do it. I'm going to highlight that. And I'm going to say, if the logical test is going to be, is net present value less than 0? That's a logical test. And you can see right now, if I hit the F9 key, it'll give us true, right? Control Z. 
obviously if I copy this up right now we get a bunch of falses up here but when it's less than zero I type a comma that's a logical test comma what do I want in the cell control V I want to actually run that calculation otherwise what do I want nothing and nothing is double quote double quote close parentheses control enter double click and send it down and then copy it up right so now you can see it's um, uh, blank up here and the chart works fine but now let's try this and I'm not going to try such a big value I'm going to say minus uh, 40,000 and now you can see the chart worked just fine those values moved up because what are we doing we're saying is the net present value less than zero if it is run this calculation otherwise blank so that makes it dynamic we have our labels up there I'm going to control Z just to get it back there um, let's make this minus 10,000. Right? Ooh, look at that. So now the, the rate, um, crossover rate is way up here. Now, I want to actually calculate this crossover rate, and we have a whole video or a couple videos, uh, about five videos ahead, where we'll talk about what's called the internal rate of return. But since we're looking at this profile here, and we can clearly understand that there's a rate there, which is like the hurdle, everything below when our required rate of return is less than that hurdle we're going to accept the project anything above we're, our internal rate above that hurdle we're not going to take this I'm going to control Z and we're going to calculate the, this here and it's called IRR and I want to make sure that required rate of return is inside the company that's the, the company determining what the discount rate is IRR is a rate determined by these cash flows. It's as if we could determine the uh, innate interest rate from the cash flows. Oh, but wait a second. We already did that. Remember, in earlier chapters, um, like for bonds, could we look at the cash flows and figure out what the yield to market was? Yeah. Um, in uh, chapter five, I think it was, we knew the cash flows from a loan and we were able to determine the rate. Now, in those earlier examples, we used the rate function. But guess what? There's specifically for this situation a function called IRR. Just like for our net present value, there's a net present value function. So I'm going to do equals IRR. And this is the easiest financial function there is. It's as if the people when they got around to programming IRR just programmed it perfectly because all we have to do is highlight the cash flows including time zero. And it will tell us the actual hurdle. And so I think if we increase the decimals a bit, I'm going to go to the home ribbon and then we can see that is the hurdle rate. Now, what's so amazing about this, not only can we get the net present value, the internal rate of return, which is that, that point at which we have positive or negative net present value, uh, and everything here, the chart and everything, will uh, update if we just come up here. I'm going to do that 10,000 one again, right? So now the internal rate of return uh, is 29, way up here. So, And you could even draw, draw a little line there and say, hey, that is the point at which um, difference between positive net present value and negative present, net present value. All right, that's a little bit about the net present value profile, building a table to show the net present value profile and a chart. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.